Hello, and welcome to Flutter Forward. It's a really, really exciting day, and thank you for tuning in. My name's John. I'm a developer relations engineer on the Flutter and Dart team. And my name is Kate Lovett. I'm a software engineer on the Flutter framework team. And we have some guests from Google and from the community joining us today. Our first guests are Rodi and Taha. Would you like to introduce yourselves? Thank you for joining us. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Rodi. I am on the material design team as a developer relations engineer. I am Taha. I am one of the many Flutter contributors. So uh, we're going to be answering your questions live. And if you have a question in the live chat, please leave it in the live chat. And uh, should we get started with some questions? Yeah, I think so. We've uh, certainly picked out some Material 3 ones to start off with, given the, uh, the experts that we have with us. So where should we start, John? Yeah, we have a first question here. The question is, when is the right time to start investing in Material 3? How can we track the progress and roadmap? Good questions. So for the first part, the right time is now. <laughs> so <laughs> if you're building with Flutter and you haven't tried it already, make sure to go ahead and try the use material three and set it to true inside your theme data. This will update any widgets that are supported and flip to the new color scheme that material offers. And what about the second part? You can track the progress of the material three uh, in use material three of API documentation in the theme data. If you find we have missed any widget, uh, you can file a bug report and link me if you want. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, Taha has actually personally migrated many of these widgets. And if you do go to the API documentation for Use Material 3 in theme data, you'll see a full listing of all of the widgets that are supported. There are quite a few now. It actually might be harder to find ones that aren't, but we're certainly buttoning up those last few cases. Yeah, that's a great point. Flutter is an open source project, so if there's any issue, just file an issue and we can get to it. Um, we have another question here, uh, so thanks for the question. Uh, is there an example app that is fully built in Material 3? And yes, the answer is yes. <laughs> um, so there's a couple different ones. Uh, there was a talk that just went live that is the Pesto app that we built using the oh. Material Study. And we did a workshop as well. You can find that on our GitHub on Material Foundation. We'll make sure there's links later. Also, there's an adaptive scaffold package, which is based a lot on the reply sample. And so these are both examples of a nice, fully integrated Material 3 app. Oh, that's fantastic. Everyone will have to definitely check that out. Yeah, and I think you know part of the exciting thing about this event is the partnership with other teams. So the Firebase team, the Material team, we've got some great workshops. Uh, online, so you can go check those out. We've got a bunch of other content, so don't forget to check that out as well. Um, so, and so with Material Three, will it change everything in my app if uh, if I'm just updating? Will I have to make more tweaks? Will it change all the colors in a drastic way? Like, will all my widgets update and everything? Yeah. Um, so for everything that's supported, um, it could be as minimal as just the background and foreground colors changing, but some widgets will be quite drastic, such as the navigation rail and bottom navigation. Okay. So I guess we check the sample app uh, for, for yep. more details there. That's a great resource. <laughs> um, so How we about have another. Yeah. You want to yeah. take it? Uh, this one just came in uh, asking for full support in Material 3. When does Material 3 get full support? We know there's still a couple little things uh, to follow up on. What do we think? I can answer that. Uh, migrating to Material 3 by default is a breaking change. And while we're doing so, we have to consider those would be affected and making sure we provide a, a transition path for them for an easy, a migration path for an easy transition. That is a really excellent point. You know, and anytime we make huge changes like this in the framework, we like to make sure that we're as dis as uh, undisruptive <laughs> as possible, so that you know you don't upgrade your version of Flutter and find yourself absolutely broken. Uh, and and like Taha said, we like to provide migration guides and really clear transition paths to make it a, an easy transition for everyone. On top of that, I would like to add that you can replace some widget with Material Two with Material Three variants of them. Like bottom navigation bar is a Material Two widget, but if you want to support your app. Uh, it, with the Material 3 style widget, you can replace it with navigation bar. So this transition will require uh, some migration path. And uh, in the eventual future, we could have uh, some sort of guide where we can suggest users to read what widgets replaced what and uh, what widgets you need to tweak to get the desired Material 3 effect. Excellent. 
Great, great. So we talked a lot about material three, but this question is actually about material two. So uh, is there a plan to deprecate material two support in Flutter? If so, what is the timeline? Most of the widgets have been uh, migrated to material three specifications. Um, when there is a plan to migrate uh, all the existing widgets, we are quite there yet. We are almost 100% uh, in the library. And um, we have to make sure that we provide an easy um, path to migrate all the widgets. Yeah, and I think Dart supports this pretty well. Like there's the deprecated tag, which I'm sure we'll be using. And so you'll have a clear uh, warning in your analyzer when something is deprecated and you're using it. In fact, you can already do this with typography. It'll show you if you're using the old M2 type scale, it'll migrate you to the new one if you use your uh, analyzer. Yeah, yeah, and it's just probably just a quick tip there. Right, right. As with most deprecations now, of course, we're not saying we've deprecated anything from <laughs> Material 2 yet, but as with most deprecations, we do have the Dart Fix tool that is available as a quick fix in your IDE that can migrate things that your analyzer finds for you, like deprecations. Or you can use the command line tool to just bulk apply fixes to your uh, whole code base without having to individually go and find them with that quick fix menu. So. Uh, there's lots of support we like to provide when we make changes like this. And so we definitely will ensure that all of these are there, ready, and certainly well communicated and documented before we do that. But I think Material 3 by default may be the ultimate goal in the long run. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Cool. Well, this is a more general question. So um, where can I find materials to learn Flutter? Yeah, so uh, one of the nice things about Flutter is it has a very extensive uh, API documentation. Um, but depending on your use case, you may find that there's uh, code labs that are more your style. Uh, we have many examples that are in the samples repo and examples that you can download. So try to find out uh, what you want to explore and learn and go for it. Uh, we have a material design channel. We have a, a Flutter dev channel. And there's a lot of content that's getting put out all the time for how to learn um, Flutter. Yep, and I'm sure if uh, one of our later guests, Puff, who will be joining us from the Firebase team, he would probably say Stack Overflow is a great resource. So yep. uh, there's a lot of great resources out there. I would also say, <laughs> again, for this event, you know, there's a lot of content dropping. So check the website for Flutter Forward for all of the new content. And certainly throughout the day, I'm sure more of it will be coming along as the day progresses. Yeah, so uh, Taha, this question might be a good one for you because you're an open source contributor to Flutter. So how do I contribute to Flutter? First, read the Contributing to Flutter guide and uh, browse the issues and pick an issue that you're comfortable fixing. Uh, if you're comfortable fixing an issue, you can write the test, file a PR, and go through the process of getting a review and landing a PR. And once you get used to the process and uh, familiar with the amount of issues you can fix, what type of issues you can fix, uh, it gets much easier and easier the more you do it. Taha is actually one of our most frequent contributors in the framework. Uh, we see a lot of him uh, filing PRs all of the time. So, I mean, how did you get started? I was browsing issues, and I found this one issue where Flutter Doctor could not detect a new version of Android Studio. And I'm one of those people who is obsessed with green checks. <laughs> <laughs> when I, whenever I run Flutter Doctor, I expect like, everything to be green. So I just copied the error message and searched within the source code. And I found the source class, fixed the issue, and I wanted to write tests because I knew that reading the contribution guide, contribution guide um, I needed a test to land this PR. So I read the existing test, and I found one easy test that, are, that is almost as the same. And I duplicated that and tweaked the version of Android Studio just to test the new version of Android Studio. And, uh, after it landed, I realized a lot of people would be having green check <laughs> with <Yeah. laughs> Android Studio. And it was quite a satisfying experience for me. So I decided to continue contributing to the Flutter ecosystem. Mm -hmm. we, awesome. we really appreciate it too. And that, you know, there's something that you mentioned that I think most folks uh, end up asking us about when, when, when they do start contributing. Um, you know, whenever you contribute to the Flutter framework, tests are something that is, are required for nearly <laughs> every change we make in the framework. And you mentioned looking at existing tests uh, as, as a wonderful guide in, in, in learning how do I test this code? How do I actually, uh, you know, r write tests for the change that I'm making? And, and that is definitely a pro tip. Yeah, I can add a little more to that. Um, 
whenever, whenever the new contributors start contributing, they've just fixed the issue. They don't think about writing the test. And uh, I sometimes comment, like, can you please write a test for this PR? The, one of the easiest way to write a test for a PR is looking into existing tests. And if you get lost, if you don't find any relevant tests that are matching your fix, you can look into other contributors' work, what, what kind of text, uh, test they are writing. And uh, it will give you a lot of information to get started when, in the beginning when you're contributing to Flutter. And uh, once you get started writing tests, it becomes a habit. And as you get more used to uh, writing different kinds of tests, uh, it will also improve you as a Flutter developer. And you get more discipline and write all kinds of tests. <laughs> Sometimes you don't even need that many tests. But it's good to have. Oh yeah, and I'm I'm also the same type of person. I love green check marks, and if you like green check marks, <laughs> tests are a great way to get those. Um, and I would also say, if you just want to file an issue, that's a valid way to contribute. I think filing issues, the team looks at those. It's great to comment on issues and explain finding steps to reproduce. There's more than just uh, contributing code and uh, helping other folks in the community. If you have a local developer community, I think is also a great way. Yeah, yeah. I have triaged like tons of issues in the Flutter repository. <laughs> And a uh, lot of people contribute with a workaround or a solution they have found on a Stack Overflow. And those are really helpful. Sometimes the issue is uh, very critical to, like, very difficult to fix. Uh, it would require some breaking change, or uh, the, the change is very complex to make. Those workarounds are super helpful for people who are stuck in their project and they want to get around this issue. And uh, those, those are uh, actual contributions as well. Like, Contributing a solution is a contribution, a type mm -hmm. of uh, contribution you're doing. Mm -hmm. It's not just have to, it just doesn't have to be just PRs. Yep, and yeah. I remember there was an integration test issue and someone was, we were trying to figure it out and eventually it just was a sample project. And so if you need a sample project and that gets people past it, that's a good place to start. Um, so I think, I think we have time for one more question, maybe before we roll into the keynote. And this one is actually a, a really interesting point. I know we've talked a lot about Material 3, but before our experts go, is there an equivalent Material 3 widget for all of the Material 2 widgets? Is it a straight mapping? Yeah, so that's an interesting <laughs> thing about Material 3 is um, not every widget will actually have a, a clean path forward. Um, for most things, um, it'll be very straightforward. Um, it'll match on both color mm -hmm. and semantics. But sometimes uh, the Des Material 3 offers this new perspective on, I can actually, for one place that I only had one type of button, I can actually now kind of de-emphasize this part of the UI, or I can now have more things to use. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so yeah, it's, it's definitely more about look at your design, see if there's any ways you can update it for Material 3, and you may find that there's new widgets you want to use instead. Oh yeah, I, I mean absolutely. Uh, many widgets have been updated. Some new widgets have been added. Uh, actually, as part of the Flutter 3.7 release that went out yesterday evening for us, maybe in the morning <laughs> where you are, uh, there is a brand new Material 3 demo app that you can check out that uh, has every single widget that's supported and links to API documentation. So definitely check it out. Great, yeah. Um, so let's just continue focusing on that question for a bit. So um, if, if I, uh, this is a separate question, but is there an equivalent Material 3 widget for all the material? We already asked that. Um, so I actually think we have to go, John. Okay, that's great. <laughs> we don't want to run over the keynote yeah. for sure. It's so exciting, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I hope you will all stick around with us. Uh, in just a few minutes, the keynote is about to start. So uh, stay tuned and we will see you after the keynote for more questions. Thanks for having us. Thank, Thank you, you for Thank joining. You.